Okay, good morning, everyone. I want to thank everyone for joining us here today, and thank you to my colleague, Mitchell Farrell, for his efforts and his support. Unfortunately, Council Member Paul Koretz could not be here this morning, but along with Mitchell Farrell, myself, and Mr. Koretz, we are the authors of our COVID-19 Emergency Eviction Defense Program. And we want to thank Mr. Koretz and the Mayor for their long-term advocacy for our eviction relief fund in the city of Los Angeles. I also want to thank our partners in this program, our, our, housing, our City Housing Department General Manager, Anne Swell, as well as her team who have been involved from the very beginning. And in program, a program like this needs a different kind of skill set to be successful. And we are very fortunate to have nonprofit partners like Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles and its executive director, Sylvia Argueta, with us this morning. Legal Aid Foundation will oversee the program and be working with our other legal service organizations like Inner City Law Center and our tenants rights advocates like ACE and SAGE so that we can have a strong partners in trying to uh, help people from getting evicted. We believe this is a great team and we believe that this program is going to be incredibly successful. As someone who has worked in the community as a community activist my entire life, I know firsthand it takes a strong organizational leadership and a certain amount of empowerment by its members for these organizations to be able to do their work. And that's why these organizations, this is what they do every single day, day in and day out, to be able to help community members throughout the city of Los Angeles. Since becoming president of the city council in January, I continue to advocate for a family first agenda and this council is moving forward in doing so. We are committed to helping the working poor and the working class communities throughout the city of Los Angeles. And we are committed to equity for our communities, to make sure that we are a better city coming out of this crisis than we, bur that we were before. COVID-19 has made us be able to focus more on what's important and make sure that we're being able to serve the people that need us the most. And for me, this begins and ends with keeping people housed. We initiated a series of protections through, uh, through the city council, and no, no evictions due to COVID-19 during the local emergency, no rent increases for our RSO properties for a year after the pandemic ends. There are protections in place, along with some new ones that the state and the federal government have enacted. But as the legal aid community and the tenant advocates know, these landlords, there are landlords out there who are still trying to illegally evict tenants, and we have to protect them no matter what. And the best way to do so is by providing legal assistance. If they end up in court, the laws of the city of Los Angeles are on the tenant side. And what our tenants are doing during COVID-19 is to fully utilize these benefits and making sure they have the protection that they need. But if they don't know their details of our laws, or if the landlord has an attorney and they don't have one, this is not a good situation for any tenant. I think some of us up here might sometimes disagree on the path to be able to help tenants and the working poor, but today we agree that we want to make sure that we have all the instruments and the tools to be able to help our tenants to be able to stay in their homes during this pandemic. Many of the people that we are serving are absolutely desperate and scared to lose their housing. And we need to do everything possible to be able to assist them. And with the COVID-19 Emergency Eviction Defense Program, we'll be able to work together in doing so to make sure that folks stay housed. With that, I would like to introduce Councilmember Mitchell Farrell, who has been an advocate on the City Council in addressing this crisis and calling for our state and federal leaders to do more. Welcome, Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you so much, Council President Martinez, for your leadership and advocacy that preceded your time on the City Council by decades. We're standing with people who have dedicated their lives pre-COVID for years and years and years to help protect renters. Uh, and I think with this pandemic, it became very real uh, who this pandemic is hurting the most and the economic fallout. The devastating human and psychological toll of the coronavirus and the existing economic decline is one thing. But six months in, 
Hundreds of thousands of Los Angeles residents are struggling to remain employed, to have any income at all, to stay housed, and keep food on the table. Renters and cash-strapped mortgage holders are in constant distress about these grim financial realities, much less educating their children at home during all of this. Especially widespread is unemployment and underemployment in the service sector, affecting renters more than anyone else. Unemployment benefits from the feds ended in July, and unemployment benefits from the state are in disarray at the moment. We cannot wait for additional assistance at this time. The, this backdrop gives rise to the urgency we, we are dealing with here and the reasons we have stepped up as a city to help renters exercising our full constitutional authority to do so. Back in March, our city began taking the much needed steps to protect the lives and livelihoods of the most vulnerable communities, including passing one of the strongest and most comprehensive city ordinances to prevent evictions due to COVID-19 financial hardships. Council President Martinez and I had previously allocated $1 million in rent, uh, rental assistance for residents in our respective council districts. We then followed that up by working with the entire city council in allocating $100 million in CARES Act funding to help renters across the city affected by COVID-19. With this latest step, we can now move forward with an additional resource to help renters during this trying time through the COVID-19 Emergency Eviction Defense Program. This is why Council President Martinez and I introduced the COVID-19 Emergency Eviction Defense Program with Paul Koretz as a critical companion piece to the 103 million rent subsidy program to ensure that funding goes to, toward providing legal assistance to renters who are under threat of an illegal eviction, offering defense against landlords who choose to violate local and state emergency orders despite protections that have been granted by the city and the state. This program will empower tenants with knowledge to better understand their housing rights, legal assistance to earners making 80% AMI or below, rental assistance, and more in an effort to, to prevent widespread evictions during this extended time of emergency. This moment requires us to act urgently and with unprecedented collaboration among city departments and offices to address income and socioeconomic inequalities that the COVID-19 crises has spotlighted and to help prevent the most vulnerable, children, families, and the elderly from eviction. Again, thank you, President Martinez. Thank you, all advocates and Sewell. We're stepping up as never before, and we mean business. We want to keep people housed, fed, and healthy during this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. And next, walk, I want to welcome Ann Swole, who is the general manager of our housing department, who has been involved in this effort from the very beginning. Ann? Thank you, Council President, and good morning. Um, I'm Ann Sewell. I'm the relatively brand new general manager of the Housing Community Investment Department of the City of Los Angeles, but I have been working on this issue of housing insecurity, housing instability for decades, and so I'm really excited to be with you today. The housing or Evictions threaten the housing stability of over 15,000 city residents in typical years, and this year is anything but typical. We know that eviction results in displacement and homelessness for far too many tenants who are living paycheck to paycheck, and the pandemic has resulted in job losses and loss of income for many of the most rent-burdened households in our communities. A recent survey by UCLA and USC found that 10% of tenants are behind on rent payments and 7% have paid no rent for, since losing jobs in the pandemic. In Los Angeles, that translates to a quarter of a million people in, in our city. Currently, the city and the state and even um, the Centers for Disease Control's moratoria protect tenants from evictions, but those will expire in the coming months. So having access to legal support when facing a possible eviction can make the difference between a tenant being able to rely on the rights that have been established in our city ordinances and 
state legislation or not. It can make the difference between having the ability to find a new apartment and move or homelessness. That's why today's action under the leadership of Councilwoman Nuri Martinez and Council, uh, Council Member O'Farrell is so timely and necessary. The EDP and Council Member Coretz. The EDP will provide a comprehensive approach to help tenants stay housed, stay safer in the pandemic, and ease economic insecurity by focusing on eviction pre prevention, legal support, and assistance in attaining housing security. Um, there's going to be many paths, many doors to accessing the support that we are hopefully the council will approve um, this morning. But one is by calling the department's hotline at 866-557-7368 for assistance. Um, that's 866-557-7368. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Again, thank you for your leadership and your amazing staff in helping us launch this program. Earlier, I said that we had two great tenant advocates here uh, today, Ace and Sage, and I'd like to invite Joe Donlin from Sage to say a few words. Joe? Good morning. My name is Joe Donlin with uh, SAGE, Strategic Actions for a Just Economy. Uh, along with LAFLA, ICLC, and ACE, we're here today as proud representatives of the Right to Counsel Coalition. At SAGE, we work with low-income tenants from black, indigenous, and Latinx communities who are hard hit by a devastating health and economic impacts caused by the coronavirus, and who at this increasingly vulnerable time fear the loss of their home on top of everything else. Prior to the COVID-19 crisis, we already had an eviction crisis, an epidemic in its own right. So much so that many of our members at SAGE have experienced what's known as serial displacement, the same family facing one eviction after another, indeed one traumatic event after another, which each time leaves indelible marks on people's physical, mental, and financial health. Now in the middle of a pandemic that requires social distancing and a place to breathe safely, Displacement is nothing short of deadly. As many signs in the streets right now say, eviction equals death. That is terrifying to consider knowing that LA now must encounter potentially hundreds of thousands of evictions. One tenant leader named Oscar is a single father of two who lives with his 80-year-old mother. And due to COVID shutdowns, his income has diminished and caused him to be unable to pay rent. He told me yesterday that he fears what would happen to his family if they were evicted because he knows all too well the harm an eviction can inflict upon family. Before joining Sage, Oscar's family faced eviction several times and each time they didn't know what to do and instead just left. We call this self-eviction because the tenant chooses to leave after pressure from a landlord and before exercising rights as a tenant. Why would he do that? simply because he didn't know he had any rights at all. Oscar is relieved now to be connected to organizations who provide daily Know Your Rights workshops and access to legal services. And that's why we're here today, because knowing your rights and having access to an attorney can mean the difference between keeping your home and becoming homeless. This emergency eviction defense program launching today is essential. We know that 90% of tenants face eviction without an attorney, and in almost every case, they lose their home, even when they have a valid legal defense. Yet at the same time, we have seen when tenants do have an attorney working alongside of them, they keep their homes over 80% of the time. The scales of justice are too often tilted against tenants who already face systemic injustices and institutional racism. Having the right to an attorney changes that, and as a result, prevents homelessness. So great respect goes to Council President Nuri Martinez and Council Member Mitchell Farrell for establishing this emergency eviction defense program. And tremendous thanks goes to Council Member Paul Coretz, who over two years ago had the vision to call for a right to counsel for tenants. A big thank you to our partners at the Mayor's Office and at HCID who have been pivotal, pivotal in crafting this program. And most of all, we must lift up the thousands of tenants who continue to organize and push us all to address housing injustices. The Right to Counsel Coalition knows the need is immense, so we continue to work with the city and the county to build towards a codified right to an attorney for all tenants who face an eviction. 
This program we are launching today is a massive step in the right direction. Thank you. Now I want to welcome Sergio Vargas with ACE, who will introduce Abel and Dolores Molina, who will speak about their own struggles and the need for this program. Sergio will also interpret for both of them. Muy buenos días. Uh, muchas gracias a todos por estar acá. Good morning. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, my name is Sergio Vargas, and I'm the lead organizer with ACE. ACE is the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment. This is a, a community group that is working with Latino and black and brown community in low income uh, communities so we can help raise their voices so they can have a voice and fight for their rights. Um, I'm going to introduce to you Dolores Rosas, which is a tenant that faced an illegal uh, increase and was able to find help through our organizations and through our programs like this one that's being created right now. So please, um, Dolores. Muy buenos días a todos. Mi nombre es Dolores Rosas. Le doy muchas gracias a los concejales por haber creado este programa. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dolores Rosas. And first of all, I want to thank the council members that have been able to work with us uh, to fight for a program such like this. Nosotros hace tres años fuimos desalojados, o más bien nos querían desalojar. Pero buscamos ayuda con ACES y la señora Lupita González nos dijo cómo podíamos hacerle para poder encontrar un abogado sin que pudiéramos pagar. Three years ago, uh, my corporate landlord tried to illegally raise my rent and evict me. Um, we had nowhere to go, nowhere to find help, but we were able to seek help in organizations such as ACE, where organizers such as Lupita were able to help us find a lawyer so we, uh, for free, so that way we can have some kind of representation. Porque nosotros somos de muy bajos recursos que no teníamos cómo pagar un abogado. Por eso es que buscamos ayuda con ACES y la señora Lupita González nos dijo cómo podíamos hacerle y así hicimos y tenemos a hogar ahorita. Aunque pasamos muchos acosos y nos han aumentado mucho la renta porque pagábamos 680 y nos aumentaron a 1,200. Yo pienso que eso es mucho para nosotros. As a low income family, um, we didn't have the money to be able to pay a lawyer so we can fight this case. But uh, through organizations, we were able to get a lawyer for free that represented us. We went to court and we won our case. I still have my home. Even though we went through so much harassment, they tried to raise my rent from $600 to $1,200. Like, there's no way we can pay something like that. So I just want to thank um, Ace and, and other folks that have been able to help us to find something like this, to be able to have a, a representation when we most needed it. Nuestros arrendadores son muy racistas con nosotros porque desde que ellos agarraron esos apartamentos, Hemos vivido mucho racismo ahí con ellos porque no nos quieren, nos quieren sacar de ahí, pero nosotros seguimos luchando para poder quedarnos ahí a vivir porque nosotros no tenemos a dónde ir. We face a lot of racism in our building uh, because of the constant harassment, and it's you know it takes a toll on you. But having the strength of being in organizations, being able to organize, and being able to work with our leaders, elected leaders, to be able to create programs like this, it's uh, it's it's great. Y yo pienso que nosotros pues tenemos que luchar y seguir adelante para que sigamos viviendo ahí porque. Pues nosotros no nos metemos con nadie, siempre hemos vivido ahí, tenemos 22 años viviendo ahí y nunca nadie nos había hecho esto como es lo que está pasando ahorita. We've been there for 22 years and um, I'm encouraging folks to fight, to organize so you can keep a home. Por eso yo pienso que todo lo que hicieron ahorita los concejales para 
que todas las personas tengan un abogado sin pagar, yo pienso que está muy bien, porque a veces sabemos muchas personas que no tenemos cómo pagar un abogado y pues a veces no sabemos ni para dónde dirigirnos, por eso yo les doy muchas gracias a los concejales. I th uh, that's why I want to thank the council members for being able to listen to the community and work alongside to be able to cre create a program like this. A lot of low-income folks, we don't know what to do. And now being able to seek out help and being able to have a free representation, it it's, it's, it's life-changing for us. Thank you so much. I just want to, I have a few remarks in Spanish. Is there, there's Spanish media here, right? Okay. Hoy anunciamos el programa de defensa de desalojo de emergencia COVID-19 de 10 millones de dólares que ayudará a los residentes de la ciudad de Los Ángeles a luchar contra los desalojos ilegales. Si tiene que ir a corte, tener representación les ayudará a llegar a un acuerdo con los propietarios con la ayuda de sus abogados. Por ejemplo, si hay una familia que necesita de 500 a 1,000 dólares, el programa le puede proporcionar los fondos para que la familia permanezca en su hogar. Todos los que están aquí, la ciudad de Los Ángeles y las organizaciones que están atrás de mí, tenemos un objetivo común, mantener a las personas en sus hogares. El Consejo de Municipal de Los Ángeles adoptó una serie de protecciones de desalojo durante COVID-19. Nuestras leyes están al lado de los inquilinos. Este programa garantizará que se represente nuestras leyes y que los inquilinos puedan mantenerse en sus casas. Agradezco a todos los que están aquí por su trabajo, su colaboración, su pasión para ayudar a nuestra comunidad y a nuestras familias en Los Ángeles. Muchísimas gracias. Are there any questions? Anne, do you want to join me? Anne? Is there a cap on the rental assistance when needed? Is there a cap on the rental assistance when needed? Yes, there will be. Um, there will be a small emergency pot um, that the legal services providers can use for clients, and then there's a uh, uh, up to four months, four to six months worth of um, assistance through our um, family um, centers. Today's vote launches the program. Yeah. Officially, yeah. So the program will ramp up uh, between now and December, and it will last throughout the, uh, the next year. So we'll take about two or three months to ramp it up after today's vote. Then the program will last throughout 2021. Correct. And you know something? It's worth mentioning in the meantime, Feel free to log on the HCID website, call the council offices if renters are being threatened unlawfully. The individual council offices in HCID will work with a renter who is under threat while we ramp up to offer this assistance. So we'll be, um, it takes a while, of course, to enter into contracts with these good legal services providers and community outreach people. So we will be doing that, as the council president said, in the next couple of months. But, um, you know, as, as Council Member O'Farrell said, you can still call our website. We will still take complaints, um, refer them as needed, and, and um, make sure people get the help they need. The community education program, which is going to be really important, you can't even know that you need a legal service provider unless you know your rights, will be launching you know, the, in the next couple of months, and then we'll really start the whole program, as the council president said, through 2021. Thank you very much.